money. So you see a lot of, you know, lower, and, and that's really a class issue, and, and race does come into play. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard, right here on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Good morning and welcome to Let Your Voice Be Heard right here on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy hey. Sunday. Good morning. Of course, this is the show where we talk politics, social issues, foreign policy, Baychella, oh. and all the other good stuff. Can you believe I didn't know that was happening until my friend... And Stop. listener at the show, Katrina, texted me, like, are you going to watch the stream tonight? And I was like, what are you talking about? And she <laughs> called me immediately and was like, Beyonce's live streaming, you idiot. What is it? She didn't say that. She's very nice. But I felt like an idiot for not knowing. I she saved me. I literally spent an hour this morning watching all the clips yeah, me from too. Beyonce's performance. Yeah, I know. Epic. Me too. Okay? E- amazing. I was a little drunk last night, and then I went to bed <laughs> after the cold open for SNL. I wanted to watch the whole thing, but I was too tired. I had anyway, to to I mean, <laughs> Beyonce is just the queen. Yes. If, yeah. I mean, if you forgot. If you forgot. Oh, my God. So and, anyway, guys. Well, isn't that why today's title is called Who Run the World? Men? <sighs> Unfortunately. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So my name is Selena Hill on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me at Miss Selena Hill. I'm filling in for Stanley because he's not here. I think he's in Albany um, in that epic battle between. He's being uh, a loser. Yeah. Well, there's a lot going on uh, in Albany right now between the winner. governor and uh, <laughs> that epic <Nixon>. battle. <laughs> so it's a lot, guys. But yeah, hey, who am I here is. with? Hey, hello. I am Jackie Cohen. I've been out for a few weeks, so it's nice to be back. Um, and y- You're on the show still? I am still on the show. I uh, I have other important things that I do when I'm not here, um, so sorry. But I am happy to be back, and you can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram at Jackie Cohen. That's J-A-Q-I-C-O-H-E-N. Yay. Um, so I'm Alyssa Fuchs, and I'm your uh, political and legal correspondent. Uh, we'll keep last week's joke running, which is talk legal to me. Um, yes. And I got some legal stuff for you today about attorney-client privilege, which we'll get to in just a little while um, during our fun news roundup, where we talk about all things uh, crazy that have been in the news this week, including Beyonce and James Comey and Donald Trump and lots of other fun stuff. Um, but in the uh, meantime, you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Alyssa Fuchs. That's Alyssa with an I. Or on Twitter at Alyssa Fuchs. Or you can leave a comment on the Politically Preposterous fan page, which is facebook.com slash Politically Preposterous or at Poll Preposterous on Twitter. Yes. So we have a great show lined up today. Um, as Alyssa teased a few moments ago, we're going to be talking about women in the workplace. We know that we commemorated Equal Pay Day not too long ago. But, you know, there are a lot of issues that women have to uh, face a lot of hurdles a lot of challenges and it's 2018 but enough progress has not been made so we're going to talk about that here on let your voice be heard today but before we get to that we have a lot of news stories we're going to kick off i mean there's a lot going on with syria and the military strikes of course trump is going crazy on twitter as usual it's sunday morning so you know he's up with his newest twitter tirade now watching fox news and watching fox news of course um we talked a little bit about bay cella so um that's and also uh starbucks right so there's a big controversy going on with starbucks we're going to talk about that in the news roundup there's a lot like there's so much news this week there really is there's paul ryan there's just it just does not i don't even know how we round it up it's just (laughs) too much (laughs) too much to round up that's a good question we'll try michael cone i mean i don't know where do you want to start the p tape the controversy over the p tape yeah which i definitely believe how do you pronounce his last name cone yeah that's interesting (laughs) it's michael like jackie cohen 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 Cohen, Cohen. Uh, anyway, I'm a Long Island Jew. <laughs> yeah, well, my last name's Cohen. <laughs> I, I find it interesting. So Westchester well, Jews pronounce it Cohen. She's the authority yes. on how to pronounce Cohen. No, but I feel like if you're from Long Island, you kind of are the authority. So it's, <laughs> that's right. I hope but, I'm saying it right. Yeah, you know, the, how it, there's as many ways to say Cohen as there are types of Cohens, obviously. <laughs> well, clearly. Obviously. So, yeah, guys. And of course, if you want to chime into our conversation today, you can call us up at 212 212- Six five zero six nine zero three. You can also tweet us at be heard underscore radio. And shout out to everyone who's watching us via live stream. Um, Jackie Cohen. <laughs> 
watching. <laughs> Shout out to Jackie. <laughs> Shout out to Stanley, who's probably going to be watching us. Stanley, share our show. You heard that, Stanley? We yes, you, Stanley. We're yeah. looking at you. Yeah, Stanley, you should be looking at us, and we're looking right back at you. Well, no, so. we're not, and thank <laughs> God for that. <laughs> but hold on. Did you guys know that today is Women Run the World? What is that? It's a huge marathon race. It was oh. trending on Twitter. And I was just like, hey, that's perfect, because we're going to be talking about how women don't run the world. But they literally the run, like, They're 26 li- miles of it. Yeah. <laughs> literally running. The world right now uh, in this marathon race. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys are watching um, or on Twitter, but if you see that that hashtag, it's been trending uh, this morning. Women run the world, so yeah, and obviously we can run the world literally, but we're not when it comes to positions of power. I mean, even what happened with Hillary Clinton, that whole debacle um, was horrible when she was running for president, and people didn't vote for her because of obviously sexism. And now we have Donald Trump running our country in the ground so um there you have it when you don't support women you get trump and i think that that's the theme (laughs) that's the theme today (laughs) okay don't support us look what happens well i mean listen let's not even get into the fact that so many white women supported trump but that's another show that's as we say Um, it's very nuanced it is it is for sure um so anyways, on that note, are we going to take a quick break before we yes. get into all this news? We are going to take a quick break. And obviously, I'm on the PC ones and two today. So we're going to be playing some Beyonce. We're going to be playing Drake. I'm going to try to get some Cardi in there for us. So just Cardi with the Good. party with Thank the party. You. Yes, Cardi with the party and the party. That's exactly, <laughs> that's the name of the song. That's right. When I walked into my family celebration yesterday, I said, "Party's here." <laughs> like when it's on an episode of Jersey Shore. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Hold yourself because Jersey Shore is back on the air now. Oh, I, know. Right. I need to watch it because they're all like sober and have plastic surgery now. It's like great. and kids I need, and kids. I need to watch it. Yay, thirties yeah. <laughs> sober. Okay, sure. wow. All right, guys. So again, don't go anywhere. This is let your voice be heard right here on WHCR ninety point three FM. We're taking a quick break, but when we come back, we're talking about all of the news that's been going on for the last couple hours. Like it's just too much to keep up with. This is let your voice be heard. Boy, bye. Stanley, bye. This is the Women Run the World Not Really Show. With Selena Hill, Alyssa Fuchs, and Jackie Cohen. (laughs) Stanley, are you really talking about Beyonce's body at Coachella last night? Objectification. What did he say? Stanley said, y'all see her body at Coachella last night. I mean, it was good. So, I mean, the, Stanley, that is Jay Z's body. You are not to talk about that. Uh, that's <laughs> offensive. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I'm kidding, obviously, I'm just a little bit like uh, Beyonce like runs Jay Z. Don't you know? Yeah, that's how it actually works. She upgrades him. Yeah, she definitely <laughs> upgraded him. All right, guys. So we're back. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard right here on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Again, my name is Selena Hill. I'm here with my co-host Alyssa Fuchs what, and what? Shaki Cohen. Hey. Stanley Fritz is somewhere watching and drooling over Beyonce like he should be. Like we all are. Like we all are. Bay Cola I mean Bay Chella is still in effect, guys. She's gonna be performing next weekend too, so I think. And um yeah. Oh, not, Stanley says Coachella. Alyssa Fuchs doesn't understand slang. Like, she bodied Coachella. No, I know. But he wrote, oh. did y'all see her body, Coachella? Yeah, no, I'm she, like, she bodied it. I, I got it. I was just reading the double entendre into it just to make fun of you, Stanley. <laughs> this is how. Okay. So, um, yeah, Beychella is happening. Cardi B also is performing there. And she's pregnant. So shout out to Barty with the baby. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, because, you know, women can do it all. Now they can have careers. They can be pregnant. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little later in the show. But before we get to that. You know, they can also call the cops on black people at Starbucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, white women. Was it a white woman that called the cops? I mean, I'm guessing it was. Okay, so we don't know that for sure. But, guys, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the outrage over that Starbucks video that went viral of these two 
young African American guys being arrested. Apparently, uh, they asked to uh, use the bathroom in a Starbucks in Philadelphia before paying, and they were um, that that was against company policy. So they said, "No, you can't use the bathroom unless you are a paying customer." Apparently, they took a seat. I read reports that they were waiting for another friend to join them, but they were asked to leave by the Starbucks employees. And then afterward, um, they didn't leave. They called the cops and they left in handcuffs. And it's been a lot. It's been a lot because if you see, if you guys seen the video, you see this um, woman saying they didn't do anything. Then you see this white man who's just like, they didn't do anything. You're arresting them because they're black men. Like, what did you guys think about this? I mean, that's literally what it looks like, right? They were literally sitting in Starbucks. How many times have you ever sat in a Starbucks? Everybody else does. Yeah, what everybody else does. Just sitting there, they're waiting for a friend. And they were arrested for sitting while black. You know, that's that to me watching that video. That's what I that was my impression. I will it's say outrageous corporate Starbucks um, put out a, a very quick response, quicker than other places and companies have done. Um, obviously, corporate Starbucks isn't the one who called the cops on these people. Somebody at this local Starbucks did maybe an employee, maybe somebody else who was there. More likely than not an employee. Um, and Starbucks very quickly put out a statement saying they were going to investigate the incident and that, um, you know, it wasn't something that they as a corporation supported and actually as all this was going on i was actually at a starbucks yesterday <laughs> and i was of course we were talking about it with some of the starbucks employees um on the upper east side and the employees at the starbucks were black and they were of course extremely concerned about it as employees of starbucks sure. um but they also said that they were really happy to see that their company had put out a very quick statement saying they were going to look into it but you know who's not happy um so the district attorney in philadelphia krasner. lawrence krasner he is he actually actually uh, um, blasted Starbucks. Um, he's a former civil rights attorney and he's pushing for radical changes in Philadelphia. Yeah. And he was saying that like the apology is not good enough and that they need to train employees, um, give them some cultural diversity training so that they're not interacting with people of color in this type of way. And I think that, you know, Starbucks, the CEO has also put out that statement. I think that they are taking accountability, but I think, you know, taking it a step further is definitely something that we need in place no absolutely absolutely it's kind of wild the same way that we talk about like law enforcement right and like retraining police officers is like how we have to talk about retraining like starbucks employees or like court <laughs> like, you know like anybody like, like anybody yeah like, it's pretty wild but it's true i mean it's true right like it's not just like it's sh- this shouldn't just come down to like life or death instances like it d- often does with the police it needs to come down to like corporate culture and this is like a lesson called don't call the cops on black people who aren't doing anything wrong yeah period right in yeah. starbucks in mcdonald's on the corner it doesn't matter if somebody's minding their own business don't call the cops on them just because you're white and you're scared and they're not it's just crazy have some human decency right so uh speaking of human decency i don't know if you guys saw that story of the high school student the young black man who was applying to 20 20 different colleges, including Ivy League schools. He got a free ride to all 20 of them. Whoa. And um, so these Fox News anchors on a local channel called him out and they were like, that is so obnoxious. Why are you applying to 20 schools? You are taking a seat that somebody else could have deserved. And um, in response, he said, you owe me an apology (laughs) and some human decency. Yeah. But let me tell you guys this. So Black Enterprise actually published a piece on our website. Our education editor, she wrote a great piece about it, and it's titled, There's No Human Decency. The Young Man Accepted to 20 Schools Needs to Get Over Critics. And in this piece, she says, get over it. Wow. And it's a great piece. She's, it's, a, it's a very different perspective. She says that, you know, black people, we've fallen into this trap time and time again. When somebody criticizes us, we need to take the high road. When they go low, we go high, like Michelle Obama said. And we need to stop just giving them our energy and the time of day. How do you feel about that? When, well, <laughs> you know, this is what this reminds me of. When I was growing up. Um, there was a thing and it was like if you were playing in a sports game, like, for example, a softball game or a baseball game and 
you were winning and the other team was trying to make fun of you or whatever, you would just be like, scoreboard, right? You'd point at the scoreboard and be like, well, we're winning. And that's what I feel like he should do. He should just hold up all the acceptance letters and be like, scoreboard, winning. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Selena, as a woman of color, how do you feel about that argument? Because I'm sure that you've been, as as someone who's successful in your field, you've been, you've received criticism, right? I'm sure, as, as everybody has. How, like, how do you feel about that argument? Yeah, great question. Um, Jackie, I'm actually, I actually encourage our education writer, education editor to write this piece. I knew her perspective and I told her, you know, put this out there because it's different. Um, obviously I respect her opinion, but I'm, look, I'm, I'm team petty on this one. (laughs) I was like, yes, give him an apology. Okay. I was, I was with the apology tour because I think he deserves it. I think those Fox anchors, they honestly, they need to be put in their place because in a time where black men are being shot down and demonized for doing like simple things, you have this young black man who's doing something extremely positive and we should be appraising him. We should be lifting him up and we should be saying like, you know what? Look at him, not putting him down and calling him obnoxious. Well, listen, on top of the fact that the anchors on Fox News never would have said that if it was like Becky who got into 25 schools. I mean, let's be real. No, it's, it's, it's they, they really would not have said that. That's absolutely true. And I, I think Selena makes a really good point, like especially coming off of the last story we just discussed where two black men were, were the two men who were arrested um, or were they actually arrested? Yes, yes they, yeah, were. they were. They were, were arrested. In a Starbucks for just sitting there. Like, this is a victory, and it's, a, like, an incredible accomplishment for this young man, and it's something that should be celebrated. To get into 20 schools and a free ride at all, at, you know, many of them is fantastic. So Stanley Furch just t- chimed in via Facebook Live. He said, that's right, Team Petty. F those trash white people, Selena. <laughs> Thanks, Stanley. Uh, Alyssa? Anyways, you know, so Larry Krasner, um, you know, he's a, he used to be a civil rights attorney like I am. And that actually sort of brings me to a big current event story that has been going on this week about um, Donald Trump's lawyer, Michael D. Cohn. His, law- his office in New York City got raided, as well as his hotel room at the Regency. Of course, the day after he decided to sit outside the Regency and smoke cigars and people were walking by and gawking at him and taking yeah, pictures. Right. Um, and then, of course, Donald Trump went on this crazy rant, and he's been going on this crazy rant all week, but including this morning about a multitude of different things, um, some of them being surrounding, uh, you know, um, the Russia situation and James Comey and calling James Comey a slime ball and uh, talking about how uh, the P tape isn't real, although he didn't explicitly say that. But, you know, he's attacking James Comey, who came out this week and said Donald Trump said, don't look into the P tape or look into the P tape because I need you to prove that it's not true, yep. um, which is sort of crazy. But I just wanted to like back up for a second and address this issue of attorney client privilege, because a lot of people don't know um, what Donald Trump is talking about. He's saying like attorney client privilege is dead. Um, uh, That's obviously not true. Attorney client privilege is the idea that anything you tell your lawyer is confidential and that your attorney cannot tell other people and can't tell the court. However, there is a major exception to this rule and it is called the crime fraud exception. And it applies anytime you try and use your attorney to commit a crime. Um, So if you just call up your attorney and tell your attorney that you committed a crime, that is confidential. You know, you can admit to your attorney that you committed right. a crime and that is completely confidential. It's why I tell you all my secrets, Alyssa. <laughs> right, exactly. So if you like want to call me up and pay me and then tell me about all the crimes that you've committed. That's, oh, I don't pay you. That's oh, no. okay. <laughs> um, but if you use your attorney to commit a crime or a fraud, then the idea of attorney client privilege goes away because you cannot use your attorney to commit a crime or a fraud. This is not Better Call Saul. Wait, so okay? we can't do Ocean's Nine? You're not Walter White. I I thought we were going to do the reboot. Um, And so Donald Trump is absolutely incorrect when he says attorney-client privilege is dead. It is not. If Donald Trump used Michael D. Cohn to commit a crime, then neither one of them can benefit from attorney-client privilege. Period. End of story. And there you have it. Thank you, Alyssa, for explaining that and lawyering anyone who thought opposite. I'm just happy to know that I cannot use Alyssa for my heist movie. (laughs) It's really like that was about to be a difficult situation. I'm happy that you stopped me before I. Yeah. So uh, do not do any of that. Do not do any of that. And, um, yeah, and I and I want to also talk about Trump's uh, tirade about uh, James Comey and the P the P tra- tape controversy, the newest one. But before we do, we actually have a caller on the line who wanted to respond to one of the stories that we were just talking about. Derek, let your voice yeah. be heard. Derek, 
Yes, when they it's in the name calling, like it's for certain black black girls, like Gabby Douglas, when they used to call her her names about her hair, call her little monkeys, things like this here. You know, um, I I think like just to relieve their soul, relieve themselves, it's just you know call back a name to see if they you know see if they seriously call them. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Derek. We actually can't use derogatory slurs on our show at all, yeah. ever. And the K-word is definitely one. Yeah. So we had to cut your mic. Um, guys, if you're going to call in, no curse words, no uh, derogatory language at all. Okay? So, Derek, I think you were trying to make a point to say that when people call marginalized names. communities are called names, they should call them names back. And if that's your point, then that's fine. Uh, but we can't use those kind of language on the air here. Yes. Okay. So moving things right along. And again, guys, you can call us up 212-650-6903. So Donald Trump is going crazy on Twitter right now. He is calling out slime ball James Comey. I, I think all of this is to, dra- to dr- distract from the fact that he's bombing Syria and he's using Syria bombing to distract from the fact that he's being investigated by Absolutely. the FBI. Like Absolutely. Every, all of this is connected, um, you know, and not for nothing. It was Donald Trump who said back in 2013 that Obama should not unilaterally bomb Syria, number one, and tweeted over and over and over again that Obama shouldn't get involved in Syria uh, because America first. So, you know, of course, those tweets aged very, very well. Um, but if you think that the Syria bombing and what's going on there and the Comey investigation and Trump Russia are, are not connected, like, I think you're sadly mistaken. Hold on, hold on, because I, I saw that um, back in 2012, Donald Trump tweeted that the only reason Barack Obama was projecting to bomb Syria was to raise his poll numbers, right? That's Still, one of those fix that's for you. Like, literally. And now you have Donald Trump, who is polling very low, and he just launched this military attack in Syria. So, like, do you think that there's some correlation there? Yes. <laughs> right? I mean, there must like we know that he's willing to do whatever it takes, right? And he doesn't care about human life or cost or whatever. So, of course, right? Well, here's the thing about Syria, right? And and I heard um uh, this this foreign po- policy correspondent, she basically called out America and the Trump administration, even Barack Obama, and she was just like, why are we only drawing a red line and attacking Syria when they use chemical warfare to kill their own people? What about when they're using traditional right. and conventional weapons to kill people in Syria? Why? How come we don't care about that? And in my argument to that is, I mean, if Donald Trump and we as Americans really care about Syrians, why don't we let let the refugees into our country? We have more than enough resources here. Absolutely. You know, we've only admitted 11 Syrian refugees in 2018. 11. Yeah. Right. Selena's looking yeah. at me. Turn that face. Yeah, the show that face. To the, uh, that's Selena's face. For those listening, you know, it's I not mean, a good face. I mean, you're you're at that's it's a great point. And I, I've heard some reporting um, on the ground in Syria where reporters have said, you know, Syrians are kind of confused at America's shock over these ke- the use of chemical weapons when the greater death toll has been through more traditional warfare. And so why is this the thing that flips everybody out when it's it's, you know, an ongoing barrage? You know, I mean, I, I can't answer that directly. Obviously, I can only speculate. I think the reason why it flips it out is because it's like so obvious. Right. When you right. see like conventional warfare, it, you know, it's like. It is what it is, right? It's it's war and it's terrible and you see the images people can but normalize like people it. can normalize it. Exactly. When you see like sarin gas attacks and stuff like that, it has these connotations like that go back to the Holocaust because Hitler used gas and you know, I think there's a lot of like other connotations that come into play when you're talking about chemical warfare and like that people just treat it differently. Yeah. But um, it's an international war crime to use chemical warfare. Well, it's also an international war crime to attack another country when you're not provoked so you know if like you really want to get into the rules of war and I know we don't have a lot of time because we have to take a break but you know real quick number one the president's supposed to ask Congress before engaging in any military action the president doesn't have the unilateral authority to use force number two there are international rules of war so we're supposed to be complied with and one of those is you're not supposed to just attack a country without any provocation whatsoever so I mean that really is an entire other show that you know maybe we could talk about at some point in the future but 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 to your point too that if donald trump really cared about syrians he would allow more than 11 refugees to enter the country thank you the end
And that's why Donald Trump better be careful, guys. We got to go on a quick break. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about who runs the world. It's not women yet. And we are back. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard right here on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Again, my name is Selena Hill. I'm here with Alyssa Fuchs. What, what? Jackie Cohen. Hi. Not Stanley Fritz. Yay. But he's actually like watching and interacting with us via Facebook Live. It's like he's almost here. It's really annoying. I wish he would go away forever. Yeah, I do too. But no, no, I actually don't because that would mean I would have to engineer every week. So don't go (laughs) away forever. But guys, if they want to chime in, what's that number one more time as well as the Twitter handle? It's 212-650-6903. And you can find us on Twitter, Be Heard underscore radio, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash let your voice be heard. Is that right? Yep. Yes. Okay. That is right. Okay. Yeah, we want your comments. We want, we want, you know, to hear everybody's from you. comments other than Stanley. Yeah, right. So right. Exactly. Other than, oh, shout out to Wait. Asinette who's watching us and Matthew. Hey, and Asinette. if you're a woman, make sure you comment on this show. Yeah, we, right. want, we want to hear from you. Right. So, guys, um, I asked the question earlier today Who runs the world? This show is actually titled Who Runs the World? Men. Not women yet. And we're going to talk about why. And like, if you're listening to us via uh, WATR 90.3 FM, you can hear who run the world in the background. But if you aren't and you're listening to Facebook Live, just imagine that you hear Beyonce. Okay. So earlier this month, we commemorated National Equal Pay Day in the workplace, which was created in 1996 by the National Committee on Pay Equity in order to bring attention to the ongoing gender pay gap. To this day, women earn less on average than men and must work longer for the same amount of pay. Now, although enforcement of the Equal Pay Act and other civil rights laws have helped us to narrow the wage gap, significant disparity still exists. Just look at your pay stub. Mm -hmm. Research shows that there are more than $530,000 lost over a lifetime of a woman's career because of the gender wage gap. That means we are losing serious bags, ladies. Now, the average college-educated woman, she loses even more money, up to $800,000 over her lifetime. So wow. basically, that equates to women bringing home $3.27 less than a man. Now, if things continue to run at this current rate and this current trend, um, we won't reach pay equity until 2059. Do the math. That's a couple more decades. But the fight for equal pay is not the only issue that women face in the workplace. Women are also more likely to suffer from unwanted sexual advances. I get that on a weekly basis. Okay, what, an unwanted sexual yes. advances? Are you serious? Yes. Seriously, at the workplace. Oh, my God. Harassment. Um, more barriers when it comes to getting into positions of power. And women of color, particularly black women, face even more hurdles. So white women, they typically get paid around 80 cents to every dollar that a white man gets paid. But black women earn only 63 cents to every dollar that a man that a man makes. And black women have to work twice as hard as our counterparts, if not harder. And we still earn less. Studies show that if the trend continues in this way, it will take. Up until the year twenty one twenty four <laughs> for black women to receive equal pay. Oh, that's a we century will away. All be dead. Yes, obviously, right? So today we're gonna talk about gender inequality and have a discussion about the pay gap, sexual harassment, the glass ceiling, and how to fix these issues. So I wanna open up this conversation by asking you guys, and of course you guys on Facebook Live and anyone who's listening or or, or on Twitter, um, first question is do you have any experience? of you know unfair t- treatment whether that was sexual harassment or being overlooked for a promotion as a woman uh yeah <laughs> i'm trying to <laughs> a think little bit. This is, yeah i mean i've definitely 
you know, I don't know about being overlooked for a promotion. I, I've been lucky to work at an organization that I really care about since I graduated college. But I think that, um, you know, I've certainly felt it. I mean, I've had instances even recently, right? And I, I've become more established in my position where I've been talked to, not by a coworker, but by so, uh, someone I've had to work alongside as like a little girl and it was very shocking to me that they I called somebody to make a request and his uh response to me was okay honey like just you know call me back and remind me I know this is very important to you but uh call me back and remind me honey okay and I was so like shocked at being talked to like that and I you know it's it's still there, right? Even amidst this like Me Too movement and and now that this has become a more um, talked about issue, you know, it's not, it hasn't gone away, right? I think people still feel objectified or still feel like they're competing. Women, with people who identify as women still feel this way in the workplace and it's it hasn't gone anywhere. And as Selena said, you know, this is going to take a long time at the current pace to reverse uh, certain pay trends. Right. I mean, look, I'm obviously in a slightly different position as a as an attorney, you know, and I'm the only employee of uh, of the firm that I work for. It's a very small firm. Um, but, you know, I can speak generally about like the legal profession, which is the legal profession is still a man's man's world. Um, female lawyers are typically paid less than men. Uh, female lawyers are constantly subjected to sexual harassment, um, even as somebody like myself that sort of identifies as non-binary and comes to court dressed in Men's suits, a lot of times wearing button down shirts and ties. I still will have men make comments that are off putting towards well, me. Remember that one time you said you had on a tie and no, a shirt, and this guy was like, Your breasts look really good in yeah, that? With suspenders. He said, your, Those suspenders make your breasts look really good, your chest look really good. Uh, how did you respond? Cannot. I, I like, Yeah, I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, uh, Thanks. And I like, I walked away because like, I was totally like, it just took me a while to process. Um, but like, you go to court and like, sometimes male attorneys, they just like, like they see me and they'll be like, oh, like that's this is going to be so easy. You know, like they'll give me this look like it's going to be really easy. And then we get mm. up there and I start talking and then they all like want to go hide under the desk because they realize I come very prepared um, and I'm a pretty decent lawyer as far as I'm concerned. And I've had many times where I've gotten up there in front of a judge and made my legal arguments and beaten the man and then have the man go, but your honor. And the judge be like, but your honor, what? Yeah, like, like she's a, making a better arguments than you. Um, but they get confused. But like just generally speaking, I see the way male attorneys treat women attorneys. Um, and like to take that one step further, a judge, Jack Weinstein in the Eastern District, actually had to put out a memo and tell male attorneys, if you have your female associate write the brief, then when you come to court to argue the brief, don't think that you're going to argue the brief. I'm going to tell you, you will have a seat in the audience and I'm going to have your female associate argue the brief because a lot of times that's what happens. Wow. The women do the work. And then when we get to court, our not necessarily mine, my bosses are really great, but um, the male bosses are like, oh, you did all the work, but I'm going to be the one that actually gets up and argues mm -hmm. in court, which is the fun part, per, uh, so to speak. So, you know, like this issue of sexism and the pay gap um, goes through all professions. Um, you know, it happens to doctors, to lawyers, uh, you know, to professionals, to everybody, well, like, you know, everybody from your low wage worker at McDonald's yeah. all the way up to, you know, your female CEOs who have a really hard time breaking that glass ceiling. Right. So I so I work in politics and advocacy and I, you know, certainly is the case in New York where people that hold the most power in New York City and state government are usually men. Right. right. We have a, a male mayor, male governor, male Speaker of City Council uh, in Albany, they call it three men in a room that make all the decisions because it, it always it is three men, the leader of the Senate, the assembly and the governor who make all the budget and and legislation decisions um, and cut deals with one another before everything gets issued into law. Um, you know, it's a very male dominated world. And these are the people that are making decisions on behalf of all of us as New Yorkers, right? It's it's typically men. Um, and there are many great, powerful, strong women who are running more and more for office. And we've had uh, previous shows where we've talked about that's part of this new blue wave is more and more women um, or, you know, 
people who are typically underrepresented in politics are beginning to run for office, which is great. But at the very top, and this is true in business, in politics, wherever, it's not enough that women are entering the field, but they need to be in these positions of power as well. Not just at the bottom, but at the very, very top. Absolutely. I would say in my experiences, I've been in workspaces where we've had meetings and our male boss has made comments about women's weight and their appearance, um, like literally joking and and fat shaming. Mm. Um, I've been in workspaces where I've had men look at me in a very sexually aggressive manner, even if they don't say anything, like just looking at me like that is enough. And, you know, I've been in workspaces where I, I've definitely felt belittled um, because I am a woman and on top of that, a black woman. So, yeah, the struggle is real. We actually have a caller on the line who wants to let his voice be heard um, about these issues. It is a male caller. So um, let your voice be heard. Yes, it all speaking of struggle. It is a struggle. So as a, a as a lawyer, I when I was younger, I I studied a paralegal, and I know the real difficulties of presenting cases and the and the homework a person got to do. It's it's really work, and men can really out argue women anyhow. I mean, I mean, for some reason, for some particular reason, woman is woman is is good power source for argument and the courtroom seems to be a good forum for her um and i would like you know you would be good to have a woman lawyer on your in your cases you know but i want to speak about the gentleman as far as the difficulties of a lawyer the gentleman in, in brooklyn he he uh, burnt himself up um I, I don't know if you knew him personally um but he was an outspoken person nation nationally known and it's the difficulty with the occupation and the work that has a person to really um, go that far and, and just burn himself up. Um, you know, it, uh, it's, it's this heartening um, um, scenario with that. Can you address something like that as far as the you know the real workload and? depression and the person just going as far as burning himself up? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I don't want to divert too much from our topic, but I will say that the legal profession is a very stressful profession. Um, it's very unfortunate when we th- hear about these things happen. There are high rates of drug abuse, uh, alcoholism, and suicide amongst lawyers, and in particular amongst female lawyers. Just Did to, something like that happen where someone burned yeah, themselves? Yeah, an attorney set themselves on fire at Prospect the Park. Park. Um, I yesterday, think it was yesterday, yesterday morning. Um, it's a very terrible situation. You can read more about it online. Um, you know, and so, like I said, I'll point out that that there are very uh, hard things facing lawyers. Um, but in particular, uh, you know, just to bring the, I know this was a gentleman who did this, but um, you know, female lawyers face these issues even more so. They feel like they they can't turn to as many people as a male lawyer can. Um, you know, in some circumstances because of the way that the profession is set up, and uh, in particular, you know, black women in the profession are definitely at the the lower end of that spectrum in terms of people who are taken seriously within the law. And that's something that we've been very working very hard to change. So um, thank you. I just wanted to thank the caller for yeah. chiming in there. I know we have some more comments. And I, I just wanted to add on to that, that I think that there it raises an interesting point about women in the workplace, which is that women, especially black women or trans women who are already so underrepresented and who already are so disenfranchised and making so much less that it's, you know, when you need to seek help um, and, you know, you're experiencing issues in the workplace, whether it's because of somebody else or because of the struggle that you are dealing with, the workload that you're dealing with, it's often harder for these women to seek help because they don't want to seem like they're complaining or they're raising issues and, you know, because they've worked so hard to get to that point in the first place. And so I think that that's something that we really need to work hard to combat is this idea of, you know, you're a woman in the workplace, you're, you shouldn't complain, you shouldn't, you know, express your discontent with the way things are because, you know, they could get rid of you and replace you with a man. You know, women need to feel empowered to speak out against Right. I mean, well, I think it speaks to the bigger picture that whenever women do say something, even if it's important or relevant, like they're looked at as complaining. And like all too often, right. like a woman in the workplace is labeled as like a complainer or a whiner simply for raising important issues that if a man raised, like would be taken seriously. Right, exactly. Um, but 
I know we have some comments on Facebook that we want to get to. So Ashanette Monet says, um, I love how you guys enlighten me on these topics I know nothing about. Aww. And she then says, what is the government doing to fix this wage gap and how can we fix this? So with respect to yeah, how what can, is the government how, doing? So uh, I'm going to answer the first question and I'm after. going to after we take a quick break and then we'll table that second question. How can we fix this till the end of the segment where we tell you what you could do to try and reverse some of these issues? Yep. Quick break, guys, but we will answer those questions. Keep those comments coming. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard. And we are back. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard right here on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Shout out to all of our listeners and those who are watching us via Facebook Live. Asinette just posed a great question. What is our government doing to help increase pay equity? And I know that um, Barack Obama, when he was in office, one of the first things he did was he pushed legislation called the Lilly Ledbetter Act that was all for pay equality. Now what's going on? Well, I mean, here's the thing about Lily Ledbetter. Lily Ledbetter dealt with some of the uh, issues in terms of pay equity, but it didn't go as far as to basically say that it is illegal to pay a woman less than a man for the same exact job. There has been legislation proposed in Congress for that has been tabled for the past three years that would actually go as far as to say that women and men who do the same job and have the same qualifications have to be paid the same amount, and it would actually give you the right to sue your employer if you came to find out that you were being paid uh, less than a man who was doing the same exact job than you and who had the same qualifications. Where has it gone? It's gone nothing. Why does our government not want to do anything to fix this? Because mostly our government is run by men. And that speaks to something that we need to do, um, which I know we're going to get to, which is elect more women. But before we get there, I know Jackie also wanted to bring up some of the other things that the government has not done that would also help women. Jackie? Yeah, like enacting comprehensive paid family leave laws, right? There are some laws that provide unpaid family leave, but many women, most women don't benefit from them. Um, And they offer certain job protections so that you can leave your job unpaid, but not get fired for it. Um, But what I'm talking about is paid family leave so that if you have family that you're taking care of or a newborn child that you're able to leave with enough time to care for that person and not risk losing everything because, you know, you're taking you're a human being that has responsibilities to your family no absolutely and and i think that you know because men have been in power so long they don't take into account the struggles the obstacles that we face and like our whole system is set up for a man to succeed. And yeah. like even um, this morning I was listening to NPR and Senator Tammy Duckworth, who is pregnant and will become the first she U.S. Had senator you had her baby. Me, who had her baby in office, becoming the first woman to the first person to a uh, first woman to have a have a baby while a senator a senator's office. She's 50 years old, by the way, or about to turn 50. And she said the wow. reason why, um, it, you know, I, I took so it took so long is because when she was um, in the armed services she literally could not take time off because she wanted to continue to extend and like excel in her career and she knew that if she was to take that time off she would be um looked over for like different opportunities so she had to wait this long and like thank god for like this new medical like medical advancements and treatments which let women have babies later but the thing is why it's like women still have to choose between pursuing a career or having a family and like she said my 30s went by like this right and you look at that and juxtapose that against like the one story we didn't get to during the news roundup is paul ryan retiring and paul ryan said he's retiring because he doesn't want to be a weekend dad he wants Wants to get more time spent with his kids. And you look at the trajectory of his career and you ask yourself, if Paul Ryan would have been a woman, would he have been able to achieve what he achieved in the amount of time he did as this, you know, fairly young man um, and who is the Speaker of the House? And I can almost guarantee the answer to that question is no. Yeah. Um, you know, and so like it, it, it is all connected in that way. And it also speaks to this idea of, you know, well, a few things. One, Republicans being hypocrites because they're constantly touting the idea of family family values and how they care about families and children and their pro-life and all of these other things that have to do about, you know, like gay people shouldn't get married and procreation and family values and family values. And yet they don't want to enact legislation that would increase people being able to women spend time with their families, paid maternity leave. And on top of that, there has been studies that show that these kinds of pieces of legislation 
actually don't just benefit women. They also benefit men. And the idea is like it's like a rising tide, right? The rising tide lifts all boats. And when you lift women up, men are lifted up too, and we all move forward as a society. And I think that is something we should not forget in this conversation. Absolutely. So, you know, we're bringing this conversation to a close, but before we do, Jackie, I want to ask you, what can we do about this? How can we continue to fight against the patriarchy? I think that we have to elect women into office. I think that we have to support women-owned businesses and companies that have women at the front. Not just, you know, it's not enough. You hear a lot about corporations and startups and businesses that say, you know, we have a diversity program, we're hiring tons of women. But I what I'm interested in is where are those women's careers going within that company, right? Is it, It's not enough that they're just hiring women, but that they're elevating women within those companies, that they are promoting them to top leadership positions, that it's a woman CEO at the at the front, right? Um, because until women are in power, both in government and business all over the place, we're not really going to see the change that we need to move forward as a whole. To your point, it is so important to groom women for different levels of success and, and basically higher levels of positions of leadership because, I, and I've heard a number of business women speak out against this, how businessmen or, or CEOs or these male executives, they point out, they see younger men and they automatically take them under their wing Mm -hmm, and they start grooming them for these higher positions because they see themselves in that younger man. But until we get women in these higher positions, then we're not going to like, we don't have anyone extending that arm. You know why? Because there's not enough women in, in our, you know, in leadership positions that can take on that role. Right. And so I think that's a really great point that we should be going out of our way to mentor other women, to be supportive of one another, because it can be really hard to navigate through these spaces. But to have that kind of network of support makes it that much easier to do. Alyssa, what can we do to increase equality. Well, you guys already took all the good stuff that I was going to take. No, but I would say, yeah, I would agree with everything that was already said. Definitely support women that are running for office. If you don't know where to start, Emily's List is a really good place to start. Um, You can go to www.emilyslist.com. We'll also try and put that website in the podcast um, because they are doing a great job of supporting women candidates. Um, If you are a woman and you're thinking about running for office, go to a training. There's plenty of free trainings that are being held um, by Emily's List by people like Run for Something, which is not just targeting women, but targeting uh, younger people. Um, obviously, they would love to have more women involved. Um, obviously, there's organizations like the Working Families Party that Stanley does work with a lot um, that also helps women out get trained and tells them how to run for office and connects them with people who can help them to raise money. Um, so that's definitely a really important thing to do. Obviously, support pieces of legislation like uh, pay equity, like paid family leave. Um, And, you know, even vote for if there isn't a woman running for office, um, but there's a man that supports those policies, then vote for the man that supports the policies that, you know, are going to help women uh, if there's not a woman running. So I think that there's a lot we can do. Um, And yeah, if you are a woman who does have a leg up, you know, who holds a position of power, then reach down and extend your hand to another woman and lift them up and, you know, mentor them and uh, try and get them on the right path, because I think that's the way that we move forward absolutely and i just want to close by saying this the pay gap that we have in our country in our society it's a reflection on how we value women we have since the beginning of time undervalued women and the work that we do whether that's domestic in the house or it's out in the workforce and i think that until we understand how crucial women are at in in our society, I mean, we are embedded in the fabric. We are 51% of the population here in the States. And until we understand that, until men understand that and see that and stop looking and, and belittling and, and condescending us in order to just, I guess, feed their egos, we're going to continue to have this problem. And I think that what we could do, I mean, as women, and, and I hate to say that because this is a male problem, right? This is yep. this is what right. men need to do. They need to train their young boys. They need to take some training clashes uh, and to understand what they're doing wrong and, and how they've been socialized to um, just like belittle women. But 
I would say for us, if we do want to do something as empowered women, um, obviously support local uh, lawmakers. Uh, we also need to support lawmakers and people who are penalizing um, employers who have who are um, discriminating in the pay for their women. So definitely do that. I think that women, we should ask for more money and I know that that's hard I know it's hard to you know ask for that promotion or, or feel entitled or feel mm-hmm. deserving enough to get that extra pay or that raise but we do have to go for it we do have to be vocal and me as someone who's been at their job for um, two years now I actually you know I brought up to some of our higher officials I said like why don't we have more transparency in our pay why don't we know how much every single person gets paid here so that if there is any pay discrimination we can confront it I brought that up in a meeting so yeah it's about you Good know you. once you yep. once you get to that point of you know you once you get to that executive level or you have some tenure in your business or your company make sure you're using your platform you're using your voice to help others and to lift everybody else up. And I want to just end by saying this. There's studies and reports that show that when women advance, men advance too. So by holding us back, you're only holding yourself back in a number of different ways. And on that note, we we do have to say goodbye. Yeah. um, So thank you all for tuning in this week. Um, We really appreciate your support. Uh, If you didn't get to hear us live, you can definitely check us out on the podcast uh, uh, that is going to be all over, but that's going to be on SoundCloud. Uh, Let your voice be heard. We're also on iHeartRadio, iTunes podcast, Stitcher, uh, a whole bunch of other places. Am I forgetting anything, Selena? Yes. The only one thing I would say is continue to support us on Patreon. You can hit us up at patreon.com slash be heard. Radio again. That's patreoncom radio. When you support us, we support the issues that you care about. We fight for. We fight the struggle. We're down at the rallies. We're in the protests, and we're talking about things that matter to you. So again, I just want to thank everyone who tuned in today. Shout out to everyone who tuned in via Facebook Live, our callers, our listeners, and everyone who's listening via podcast. If you can, please just share this on your social media feeds. On that note, we do have to say goodbye, but we will be back next Sunday. Day right here on WATR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. We'll see you then, God willing. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And-